Yeah, we'll talk about that in the 10 o'clock hour. In the 11 o'clock hour, March Madness at work. What? March Madness is supposed to be on the basketball courts, but a new study says one-third of all workers are spending at least three hours watching March Madness at work. Yep, all the pools have begun, and we'll be talking about how that affects the bottom line. Also, a little lifestyle and celebrity news. Uh Uh-huh, the annual March Madness report by outplacement firm Challenger Gray and Christmas has found that nearly one-third of workers will spend three hours or more watching basketball on the clock. (laughs) And Ryan's pointing to himself. Is that what you've been doing all morning while I've been talking? No, no, You've been over there on the... uh Uh-huh, I've seen you on the computer. No, no. Yeah. I'm in show mode. Show mode. Yeah, right. Okay. (laughs) Allegedly, this is going to cost American companies an estimated $134 million in lost wages in the first two days of March Madness. So I said, you know what? Let's talk with somebody who... uh, Deals with a lot of businesses on a day-to-day basis. An expert, actually, international speaker on sales and leadership topics. 20 years of corporate experience with us on the phone, Thomas Levickia. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. So, Thomas, have you filled out your bracket? Not yet, but I will soon. (laughs) Okay. And are you going to do it on company time? Most likely, yes. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this, Mar- the March Madness takeover. I know a lot of the guys around here, you know, that's all they're talking about is the March Madness. And I see the pools. And, you know, every football season I see those pools. I don't ever participate in them because I'm just I'm not a gambler. It's not what I do. Okay. But I, I look at them and I think it's funny because there's, like, there's genuine passion. And in, even in my house, my son and daughter – get together and they have a pool and there's other people that are in the pool and they're all talking about who whose player is getting them money and who's getting them points this week and it's it's fascinating how is this affecting the workplace well it's having a profound effect on the workplace just in terms of dollars it's going to cost businesses 150 million or close to it just in lost productivity alone so the stakes are pretty high so what do we do i mean seriously is there um, a way that companies should look at March Madness? Should we have an extra half hour for lunch dedicated to anybody who wants to discuss the pool and the brackets? Well, that's actually a great comment, and, and I'm going to probably upset a lot of uh, managers and business owners by saying this, but I say embrace it, and I will tell you why. You have an opportunity to build a strong culture within your team, and it's actually an opportunity to kind of fix if you have a disjointed team. So I think it's a good opportunity to actually have a little fun and maybe have your own contest within the office. Uh Uh-huh. But, okay, now, you've traveled all over. You've got 20 years of experience talking with uh, corporations. How likely is it that a corporation, well, I can just see us calling up the head of Clear Channel and saying, hey, do you mind? We've got a little pool going on here, and we want to actually challenge the, uh, the stations over in New York. Well, yeah, that'd go over big. That's a great point, but here's the thing. It goes, uh, it goes a little deeper than whether or not to have a pool, right? So I get calls from companies that are doing well, and those are companies that are typically have a strong culture and have strong employment engagement. If you have a company that's in trouble, it usually starts with uh, employees and lack of engagement. So here's an opportunity to get your employees engaged in a common theme. Again, I'm not saying go crazy, but maybe set up a pool. You have maybe a gift to certificate to a massage, something simple, and you have a little friendly banter in the office. However, conversely, when you give deadlines during this critical time, make sure they're clear, concise, and transparent to all so all business goals are met. So have a little fun, but hit your goals as well. Oh, or maybe uh, work those goals around, uh, familiarize yourself a little bit with March Madness. Maybe your boss doesn't even know what it is. Correct. So maybe kind of bring up, say, hey, this important you know, event is happening. Uh, you know, what university did you go to? Um, they went to a big university, more often than not. They're in the top 64, so it might create some engagement and camaraderie there. And if it's done correctly, it could be a really big positive for your team. And just think, for example, um, you watch the uh, you know the championship game or the Final Four together. It can really increase employment engagement because employees create the culture. Absolutely. Well, talking about the top ten teams, if we could break here for a moment on that. According to the USA Today coaches poll, you got Gonzaga at number one, Louisville at number two, Kansas. And this has changed hands so many times since the beginning of the season. Kansas number three, Indiana followed by Miami, Duke. Oh, I hate Ohio State is in there at number seven, Georgetown. 
Michigan State, New Mexico, and Michigan. They actually, New Mexico and Michigan round out the top ten. So, the, and there's a lot of passion because people, I know I'm very passionate about where I went to school. And Correct. other people are very passionate about where they went to school. So it, I think it goes beyond it just being a basketball game. People start their, where they went to school is a part of who they are. They're, you know, they're part of alumni associations and it's ingrained into you, especially if you really got involved in the spirit of the school where you were at. And that, that could make for some real fun in a workplace beyond it just being March Madness, but being a Wolverine versus a Spartan versus a Buckeye. Correct. And think about it. When you went to school, you actually paid to go there, but you are most excited and you love to represent your school. Why? Because it represents you. So it really gives an opportunity to people to represent their own school, but also represent themselves in the workplace. And they can really learn a lot of great things about your coworkers. Yeah, because I, I would imagine that most people, I don't know where most people around here went to school unless the conversation has come up that they went to that awful Ohio State. Um, but, you know, if that co conversation has come up, but and I know people who go to USC because we're right here with UC, USC and UCLA, so, you know, depending on what color they're wearing at a certain time during football season, I know where they went to school. But for the most part, I don't know where they went to school. Like, Ryan, where did you go to school? The Cal State University Northridge. The Cal State University. <laughs> Tawala, where did you go to school? I spent a little time at Pasadena City College. There we go. <laughs> and uh, Thomas, uh, where did you go to school? I went to undergraduate Rutgers and graduate FPU, but nobody cares about the graduates. I'll call it Right. Rutgers. It's always, why is it that we're so much more passionate about our undergrad school than we are our grad school? Because we had young, and we were young, and we had fun while we were there. We just had <laughs> great times with, uh, with the school, but it was probably more associated with beer. Uh, <laughs> no, mine, has, mine is associated with passion, tradition, loyalty, uh, lineage, things like that. <laughs> um, sure. But I, uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, in, in our book, The uh, X Factor Selling System, we talk about X Factor. Mm -hmm. And your X Factor is what motivates you. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about this opportunity with March Madness, if we kind of kind of evoke somebody's X Factor and get them really engaged about March Madness, but tie in their employee engagement with March Madness, that's a home run for both the employee and the employer. So how do we get employers to realize how important it is for team spirit? Because I can tell a difference in a an organization where people don't seem to really work together. You work together because you have to like do something together, but I mean, I can just see the change in radio. There used to be a time when uh, everybody, when we all worked together, we saw each other on weekends, we went to other people's houses, we were part of each other's families, and with the, how can I say, the downsizing, it has become very impersonal, and most of us just come, do our thing, and get out. So it's, it's the, the corporate environment, to me, has changed and moved away from that more uh, family feeling where you actually knew something about the people that you worked with and how important is that in the success of a corporation? That's a great point and the way to handle it is pretty simple. 